in this lesson, what we're going to do is cover and finish talking about the political parties that we've been talking about for the last few lessons, focusing on the structure of the Liberal Democrats, the structure of the party itself. So, as you know, we've been exploring the um, structure of um, other uh, le of other sorry political parties in the last couple of lessons, um, just like we did with the Conservatives and with the Labour Party. We're going to talk about the basic institutions within the Liberal Democrats, the process of appointing a leader, and then also the establishment of formal policy. Now, unlike the previous two parties that we've been discussing. The Liberal Democrats are quite unique in the fact that they operate a federal structure to the party organisation. There is what can be described as the Federal Party, which we're going to talk about in great detail. And then there are also smaller um, subgroups that um, can constitute being um, part of sort of the local parties for the Liberal Democrats. So this is quite unique and it's quite different to that of the previous two um, structures that we've looked at. And if you were to be given an exam question that dis uh, which is asking you to discuss and to analyse the differences and the, and the similarities between these three political parties in terms of their structure, you could probably make reference to the fact that this is a very unique and very different aspect of the political party. It means that members of the Liberal Democrats belong to local, regional and national party structures depending on whereabouts in the United Kingdom they are from. Of course, they would be uh, by regional. We're talking about England, Scotland and Wales, of course, just like with the previous two examples we looked at. And at the top of this structure, at the top of this structure at the Federal Party, we have what is known as the Federal Board. Now, the federal board is the governing body of the federal party, the main aspect of the Liberal Democrats, the, the federal party. And the current president of the federal board is a man named uh, Mark Pack, with the leader of the federal board being uh, the leader of the Liberal Democrats, that being Ed Davey. And the federal board um, also has a number of different chairs from different regions of the United Kingdom. So, for example, there is Paula Yates, who is the chair of the Welsh National Executive Committee um, for the Liberal Democrats. So, again, um, the, uh, the regional aspects of this party, so Wales and England and, um, uh, and Scotland. And then there's also, for example, Alison Roos, who is the chair of the English party for the Liberal Democrats as well. So what does the federal board actually do? Well, it exists to coordinate and oversee the, quote, implementation of the party strategy. That's a direct quote from the website for the Liberal Democrats. And um, on top of this quite broad mandate that it is given, the implementation of party strategy, um, at least once per parliament, uh, the federal board will also prepare a document which outlines the party strategy, uh, a document that will be debated and voted on at the conference. We will come back to the conference later when we um, talk about the establishment of party policy. So those are the two major things that the federal board um, actually does. The board itself is consisted of 35 members. A number of these members um, are uh, from the um, parliamentary party of uh, the Liberal Democrats, so the parliamentarians of the Liberal Democrats. We also have members from the regional institutions, so like I've just mentioned, the Welsh National Executive Committee. And then there are also um, from uh, more local aspects of the Liberal Democrats as well, and um, uh, different subgroups within the Liberal Democrats that we'll talk about in a second. So that's what the federal board does for the Liberal Democrats. Now... On top of this federal board, there are also a number of other principal committees that exist at the level of the federal party. So we have the federal board at the top that does quite a lot in terms of the process of electing a leader and also establishment of policy. So when we come back to those things, we will talk about the federal board later on. But there are also other aspects of the federal party that um, are represented by different subcommittees. So, for example, there's the Federal Policy Committee that we will definitely come back to later on. The chair of that is Ed Davey, who is the leader of the Liberal Democrats. We also have the Federal Conference Committee, who the chair is Nicholas de Costa. And then we also have the Federal Finance and Resource Committee, Tony Harris being the chair, and the Federal International Relations Committee, who is chaired by Dr. Philip Bennion. Dr. Philip Bennion, um, quite interestingly, who has a PhD in, I believe, crop science. So quite um, quite a left field uh, thesis to be studying, but uh, you, know, I'll, you know, props to him. So these are all the different kinds of uh, principal committees that exist. There's also the Federal Audit and Scrutiny Committee um, that is chaired by Helena Cole. And 
There are a couple of others. I just picked out a few um, major ones, a few of the main ones that you could reference in an essay. Um, there are others, like I've just mentioned. Uh, so if you want to, you just go down to the Liberal Democrats uh, website and you look at um, all of the different um, committees that are that form the federal party. Now, I mentioned the idea of there being subgroups that uh, represent different identities within the Liberal Democrat Party. And these are what are known as specified associated organisations. Now, the specified associated organisations, as I've mentioned, are specific subgroups within the Liberal Democrats that exist to represent certain groups and identities. And the reason why they exist, um, or at least the, to, to become a uh, specified associated organisation, you would have to get... Um, approval by the federal board and the reason why they're so important at least when it comes to the establishment of policy and, and the political process within the party itself is because they are entitled to submit motions to conference now um, some SEO uh, SAO sorry include uh, the Association of Liberal Democrat engineers and scientists we also have Liberal Democrat women we also have the LGBT plus um, group, and we also have the Parliamentary Candidates Association, Rights, Liberties, Justice, uh, and there are others as well. So, for example, the Young Liberal Democrats, and um, uh, I believe uh, there's one more, the, the, the name to which I've forgotten. But again, you don't need to know every single one of these different um uh, groups, associated organisations. You don't need to have to be able to remember and memorise every single one. Being able to pick out two or three as um, examples of what these organisations look like and, and operate as is is something that's important. So I've given you, uh, uh, I've given you five here to go through, but there, I believe there are seven or eight in total. So that's the federal structure of the party. Now let's talk about how we appoint a leader to the Liberal Democrats Party. Well, candidates for leader must first be a member of parliament. That's the first. Um, uh, that is the first of the steps that you would have to take if you wanted to be a uh, the leader of the Liberal Democrats. You have to be a, a a Lib Dem member of parliament. The next is once you have achieved that, you have to then gain support of at least ten percent of MPs, with the backing of at least twenty of the local parties and a total of 200 members. So you have to get quite a broad amount of support from different aspects and different levels of the party. So we have to get some from uh, some of the parliamentarians, so uh, the MPs. We then also have to get support from quite a broad amount of uh, local parties, and then more broadly, 200 members of the Liberal Democrats also must support you as well. Now, the timetable for a leadership election will be set and established by the federal board. They will vote on when a, an election was to take place. In fact, the last election that took place in 2020 was supposed to have been postponed, or at least it was originally postponed as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, postponed for a little bit. And then um, it, they voted on um, actually initiating and going through and going about doing the election itself. Now, to be eligible to vote in the leadership election, you have to be a member of the party by the closing date for nominations. So that's that's about it for um, eligibility. And the system that is used is a preferential ballot or an alternative vote system. And just like with any kind of AV system, voters will then rank their candidates in preferred order. Votes will then be redistributed until the candidate has more than 50%. Now, for the most part, or in a lot of instances, um, candidates uh, or at least uh, elections to the Liberal Democrats leaders tend to take place between two people. So it's often not even the case that um, we even need necessarily an AV system because at the first instance, or at least in the first round of voting, there will be a majority. And so that's what effectively happened in the last election in 2020. And in fact, interestingly, in the last election, the 2020 leadership election, which led to the election of Ed Davey as leader, uh, we see uh, the largest number of votes in the party's history, a total of 117,924 ballots being cast in this election. That's quite a significant number for a party that has, uh, over the last few years, been uh, diminishing in terms of the amount of support it is getting as the two parties become increasingly more polarised between Conservative and Labour. Finally, let's talk about the establishment of party policy. This again is done by the committee we mentioned earlier, the Federal Policies Committee, which is chaired by Ed Davey. And the Federal Policies Committee is responsible for researching and developing policy and overseeing the Federal Party's policy-making process. 
plenty of words beginning with P there. And the FPC will produce policy papers for debate at conference, and this will lead to uh, the drawing up of a federal election manifesto for Westminster. Now, I didn't mean to do the alliteration with produce policy papers, but you know we 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 like uh, <laughs> we like we like the alliteration here so um, the members of the fpc will take part in policy working groups at uh, and therefore contribute to the policy making process and the members of the fpc are, are quite broad so again we have the chair who is ed davy the leader of the liberal democrats we also have a, a select few parliamentarians that take um, a, a role we also have members such as people from uh, Liberal Democrats, the, the youth uh, aspect from the, uh, the SAO. Uh, and we also have, obviously, uh, members from the local parties and also the regional institutions as well, like the executive chair for the Welsh um, part of the Liberal Democrats too. So the Liberal Democrat Party is uh, something that operates in a very different way to that of Labour or the Conservatives. And we now have a, a better understanding for uh, both the federal system that operates, a number of the committees that exist, the existence of these specified associated groups, these specified associated committees, and then also the process for establishing a leader and also the process for establishing policy.